the Champions League match they won is officially over. But let me tell you, there are some crazy, crazy games throughout the last week. Last minute goals by Jude Bellingham, by the Lazio goalkeeper Ivan Provadel. Napoli came in clutch in the last few minutes against Braga to win their game. And there was also a few unexpected results, just like Salzburg destroying Benfica at home. We're going to talk about it all in today's video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first game I'm going to talk about is one of the earlier games on Tuesday, and it is AC Milan against Newcastle one of the more sought after games throughout this week and it ended in a 0-0 draw. Honestly, there's only one thing to say about this game. Milan absolutely dominated Newcastle. They had like 25 shots, they had more possession, they were dominating this game throughout the whole entire 90 minutes. But Newcastle's defense was incredible. Block after block after block, Nick Pope was making save after save after save incredible defensive display by newcastle and honestly if you're a newcastle fan after this game you're ecstatic with this result because realistically i think milan should have won this game probably 2-0 maybe even 3-0 but the fact that newcastle hung on to that point is incredible for them and i think this could really help them throughout the group stages another early fixture on tuesday was young boys against rb leipzig and honestly this game went pretty much how I expected it. I expected RB Leipzig to win by two goals and they did win by two goals. RB Leipzig obviously started off incredible, scoring in the third minute a header from the defender from a corner kick. But Young Boys came back 30 minutes later scoring a goal which really shocked everyone. But obviously it wasn't enough to hold RB Leipzig as they ended up scoring two more goals throughout this game. Very entertaining game but to be fair a pretty predictable result as RB Leipzig were definitely the favorites in this game. Moving on to the next game, we had PSG against Borussia Dortmund. And I actually predicted this game perfectly. I expected PSG to win 2-0, and they did end up winning 2-0. A penalty by Mbappe and a very nice goal by Hakimi with a nice 1-2 play between him and Vitinha. In the first half of this game, honestly, PSG did not look that convincing. Dortmund had a few good chances, and to be honest, they could have went up in the first half. But obviously in the second half, after the halftime team talk with the manager, PSG came back, scored two goals, and they ended up winning the game. Moving on into the later games from Tuesday, the first game I'm going to talk about is Lazio against Atletico Madrid. And having watched this game, it was honestly incredible scenes when the Lazio goalkeeper, Ivan Provedel, scored in the 94th minute. It was mind-blowing. It was crazy. As you would expect, this game was pretty back and forth. But in the second half, after Atletico Madrid were already up by one goal, they started to park the bus as Atletico Madrid normally do. And Lazio kept pushing, they kept pushing, but they couldn't find a goal. Until the big man, Ivan Provedel, the goalkeeper, came up in the 94th minute and 18 seconds, scored a towering header over all the defenders. And honestly, it was just craziness everyone was going crazy Lazio scored in the 94th minute to tie up the game and it was the goalkeeper that scored the chances of that are absolutely like zero the chances of that are literally zero and honestly it was a very entertaining game if you watched it especially that ending moving on into the next game it was Feyenoord against Celtic and honestly this result was pretty predictable in my opinion Celtic sadly have one of the worst teams in the Champions League in my opinion and Feyenoord, you know, they're a very good team, a strong team, a very passionate team. And they are probably one of the best teams coming out of the Eredivisie. So I feel like a lot of people expected this result. But nonetheless, you have to give credit to Feyenoord because it was a tough game. But they ended up scoring two goals, putting away the game pretty early on. And that's that. Moving on into the next game, we had Manchester City against the Venna Zvezda. And when they scored... The first goal of the game in the 45th minute, I was like, there is no way that Manchester City have gone down against probably one of the worst teams in the Champions League. I remember seeing the replay of that goal and all the Manchester City fans were stunned. The, the stadium was silent. No one said one word because who would have expected the best team in the world to concede against, to be fair, a pretty average team 
in Savena Zvezda. But only two minutes into the second half, Manchester City were right back in it as Julian Alvarez scored a goal. He ended up scoring again in the 60th minute and Rodri ended up scoring the third and final goal. It seems like Rodri is scoring in every single Champions League game that Manchester City play. Honestly, he is just an incredible DM and I can make a whole video on him talking about how great of a player he is. But as for this game, obviously it was pretty obvious that Manchester City were going to come out on top. The next game was an absolute battering by Barcelona against Royal Antwerp. They won 5-0. I think a lot of people expected Barcelona to come out on top on this game. But by this much, by five goals, I don't think anyone expected that. Two goals from João Felix, another goal from Lewandowski, another goal from Gavi. And honestly, this was an incredible game for Barcelona because Royal Antwerp is not a bad team whatsoever. They are a fairly good squad. They have some good talent in that squad. But Barcelona beating them by this much, five goals, all coming before the 70th minute. Honestly, this was an incredible game by Barcelona. And if they continue to play like this, I think they could actually make it pretty far in this Champions League. And the final game there was on Tuesday was Shakhtar Donetsk against FC Porto. This game was very, very strange because obviously Porto did win 3-1, but every single goal came before the 30th minute. Porto scored a goal in the 8th minute, then Shakhtar Donetsk came right back in the 13th minute. Porto scored again in the 15th minute, and they scored another and the final goal of the game in the 29th minute. So honestly, it was very strange how all the goals were scored in the first, almost the first quarter of the match. Very strange, but was a good performance by Porto. And to be honest, they're looking like a scary team. I honestly underestimated them and I thought Shakhtar could possibly get a draw from this game. But Porto blew them away. And to be fair, like I said, they're looking like a pretty scary team. Moving on into the Wednesday games, the first game I'm going to talk about is Real Madrid against Union Berlin. And honestly, I thought Real Madrid were going to do a lot better than they did. I thought they were going to score two, maybe even three goals. But honestly, they just couldn't finish their chances. They had 32 shots this game. 32! That is the most shots out of any other team that played this week. And they only had one goal. But the one goal came from the star boy, Jude Bellingham, the main player at Real Madrid. He scored, what, five or six goals? so far this season since he's been at the club including the La Liga and obviously the Champions League and what an incredible way to finish off this game scoring in the 94th minute last minute winner to give Real Madrid the goal and to give Real Madrid the three points. The other early fixture on Wednesday was Galatasaray against FC Copenhagen and in my opinion I expected Galatasaray to do a lot better. I predicted them to win 2-0. I was saying that Copenhagen has one of the worst teams in the Champions League, but clearly they proved me wrong in this game. The fact that Copenhagen were two goals up against Galatasaray playing at home is honestly incredible. And lucky for Galatasaray, they scored two goals in the final minutes of the game to give them the one point. But for Copenhagen, honestly, this was a good result by them. Obviously, it would have been better if they got the three points. But going to Galatasaray, they're playing at home. They've gotten all these new incredible signings throughout the summer. I thought Copenhagen were going to get blown away. But like I said, they proved me wrong and they did play a great game. Staying in Group A, the next game I'm going to talk about is Bayern Munich against Manchester United. Two powerhouses in European Cup history. And honestly, this game was a seven goal thriller. Seven goals were scored in this game and about three of them came in the last eight minutes of the game. Bayern Munich started off this game incredibly hot, as most people would probably expect. And to be fair, Onana did make a few mistakes, which honestly, in my opinion, costed Manchester United this game. Manchester United tried to come back with two late goals by Casemiro in the last seven minutes of the game, but Matthijs Tell finished them off with a goal in the 92nd minute to give Bayern Munich the win 4-3. Incredible game, incredible entertainment, but I think most people did predict Bayern Munich to win this game and obviously they did go ahead and win this game. The next game I'm going to talk about is Braga against Napoli and obviously as a Napoli fan I was watching this game and in terms of Napoli's performance to be fair it wasn't that great. Yes in the first half they did start off really good they had a lot of good chances and to be honest they could have probably scored two or three goals in the first half alone but in the second half 
they really dropped off. The players started making stupid tackles, a lot of yellow cards, and honestly, it was not a good performance in the second half. And that's why Braga ended up coming back in the 84th minute. They scored the equalizer. Now, thank God they ended up scoring an own goal in the 88th minute and Napoli did end up winning. But if we want to try and make it far in this Champions League, honestly, we need to play better than that because the performance in the second half today was honestly unacceptable. And I really hope that against Real Madrid, we can play a lot better than we did today. Next up, Arsenal was versus PSV Eindhoven. And honestly, I thought this game was going to be close. I thought PSV Eindhoven were going to at least score a goal against Arsenal. 4-0, four, four goals for the home team Arsenal. Honestly, incredible game by them. Obviously, this was the first time that Arsenal have played a Champions League game for the last few years. But making this type of statement in their first game honestly just incredible game for them they played phenomenally throughout the whole game they didn't stop putting the pressure they didn't stop pushing forward and obviously that's why they scored four goals goal from saka trossard jesus and at the end a beautiful outside the box finish by odegaard honestly arsenal deserve all the praise they're getting because this was an incredible performance by them. Moving on into the other game in the Group B, we had Sevilla against Lens. And honestly, I think this result was pretty predictable. Both of these teams have had a horrible start in the domestic league. Sevilla are like at the bottom of the La Liga and Lens are at the bottom of Liga. So two bottom teams facing each other. It was only right for it to be a 1-1 draw. Moving on into Group D, the last two games on Wednesday, the first game I'm going to talk about is Benfica against Salzburg. And honestly, I predicted that Salzburg was going to upset Benfica in this game. And so many people were like, you're crazy if you think Salzburg are going to win. Benfica are easily going to win. They're going to score three goals. And look what happened. Salzburg ended up beating Benfica 2-0. In my opinion, this was an incredible result for Salzburg. And if they continue playing how they did in this game, they have a good chance to make it out of their group. This was a statement win for them. And honestly, congratulations to them. And finally, the last game from match day one was Real Sociedad against Inter Milan. Honestly, I expected Inter Milan to dominate this game. And I think a lot of other people did as well. But obviously, Real Sociedad ended up scoring in the fourth minute of this game. And although Inter Milan were pressing the whole game, they had a few good chances they didn't end up scoring until the 87th minute via Lautaro Martinez. Honestly, I expected more from Inter Milan. After coming off an incredible win in the Derby di Milano against Milan, winning 5-1, I expected them to score 2-3 goals against Real Sociedad. But congratulations to Real Sociedad because their defending was incredible, they played an amazing game, and they got the result that they deserve. And that is the end of this video where I talked about every single result from the first match day in the Champions League group stages. If you guys did enjoy this video, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you want to see more Champions League content, Champions League predictions, Champions League match overviews, let me know in the comments down below and stay tuned for more videos.